Chapter 3 Vant woke. He snorted some dust that had built up on his whiskers and sneezed. He scraped crust from his eyes and when they regained focus, he oriented himself to his environment, including the bed of bones on which he lay. In his blackout, he had been deposited in death's torturous tunnel near the entrance to the cavern. The carved faces of misery surrounding him gasped for breath. Ugh. Anyone else hung over? Bant asked them. He assessed his condition. Hands healed. Teeth back in. No unsealed holes in the skin. All essentials appeared to be in working order. Could use a haircut, though. Definitely a shave. He ran his fingers across his neck and tickled his battle scar. It served as a staunch reminder that something horrid, that death, had in fact cut his head off. Several failed attempts to right himself on the pile of corpses caused the scraps to displace. Among the depths of decay, he noticed a twinkle. It was a familiar and very welcome sight. A corpo capsule. He dug into the heap and unearthed the pellet. It sparkled green when cleared of a coat of grime. Vance shoved it into his mouth, but there was no saliva to help him swallow. He spat it out and scrambled through the bones looking for another pill, which he soon found. This one sparkled blue. He popped it into his mouth, bit down, and enjoyed the greatest sensation he had known in ages. Moisture. Vance savored the luscious wetness of the capsule as it worked its miraculous science inside of him. Blue corpo capsules, when ingested, sparked a controlled reaction which bonded the hydrogen and oxygen present within the pockets of a living body to create water. With his thirst quenched, he tried the green pill again. This time it slid down his lubricated throat. Sheer bliss. Energy capsules were packed with synthesized proteins, vitamins, amino acids, and a high volume of calories to provide nutrition and restore vitality. The topper was a gas that expanded inside the stomach to create the satisfaction of fullness after only one dose. After this feast of a lifetime, or a few lifetimes, in Vance's case, he shoveled through the heap in search of additional flickering treasures. The remains contained a hidden stockpile of corpo capsules scattered among the expedition gear of the dead. He connected the dots in his mind. The adventurers who had traveled this far into the wasteland would have required nourishment, and unlike Vant, not everyone had the convenience of immortality. Light and portable, corpo sustenance and moisture pills would have been the best solution. With only a grip of them, a traveler could sustain life for months, even years, instead of having to lug around a perishable supply of food and water. Had Vant been given notice that his trip would have gone on for so long, he too would have carried a supply. Readying to depart, Vant discovered his satchel beside him. He noted how polite it was for Death to have wrapped up his weapons. But he didn't pack me a lunch, Vant thought. The capsules would suffice. He tossed an excavated handful into his pack and set off. As Vant approached the exit, golden sunbeams poured in from the world outside. His prolonged sojourn into the darkness of Death's cavern had made him alien to the light. He shielded his eyes from the sting of brightness and crawled out onto the surface. He inhaled his first breath of fresh oxygen. The unexpected purity of the atmosphere, in contrast to the stale air underground, caused him to gag. Dust and muck poured out of his nostrils. He coughed up mucus and dried blood, heaving until his lungs were finally functioning again. Vance stood. He stretched his atrophied limbs and let the sunlight blast him in the face. The sun's cleansing rays ran over his skin. Sweet liberation hugged his heart as he stepped away from the hole. After so much time shackled to the will of the curse, he again had the ability to walk wherever he wished. As promised, death had calmed the malady. Vance celebrated by moving in any direction he chose. He even hopped backward a few times, just for kicks. 
His first nibble of free will in ages tasted so damn good. Yet along with the newfound freedom came significant confusion on what exactly he had agreed to or what he had been forced to agree to. Apparently, he had made some sort of deal with a demon, but he would be damned if he knew what his end of the bargain was. You will do my bidding. Death's voice echoed through his mind as he internally re-experienced the horrors of the catacombs he had just endured. Shivering from the thought, he took a firm stance against going back to ask for directions. Instead, he exercised his long-lost right to autonomy and began the journey out of the desert. He might have a new job working for death, but right now, he would make his own choices. No scythe was being held to his neck at this moment, so he put one foot in front of the other and followed his makeshift compass, his shadow, away from death's lair. The familiar rhythmic chant of footfalls splashed up from the desert grit. But something was different this time. The weight of his pack seemed off, and something was knocking around inside. He searched the satchel and found... Death's mask. He ran the artifact through his hands. It was smooth, cool to the touch, masterfully crafted, almost paranormal in its expressionless perfection. It was the purest of white, although it did not glow as it had when worn by death. Vance's fingers brushed across the soft, inviting texture of the underside. He inched the mask toward his face. When close, it leapt from his hands and latched onto his skin. The icy chill Vant had experienced when death gazed into his soul returned to his body. The world became inky black, yet somehow he could still see, feel the environment around him. The contours of the sand, the outlines of the clouds, the stone and gravel. Everything took on an otherworldly, ethereal quality. Vant was captivated by his arms which left multicolored trails in their movement. The mask was reacting to him and to the world around him, but what exactly it was trying to say was lost on him. Some bidding. Vanth thought in regard to Death's cryptic guidance. He tugged at the mask, which had fused to his skin at the edges. It disconnected, but it did not relent easily. It wanted to be on his face. Vanth hiked on. He rolled the mask around his fingertips and pondered his new life under Death's charge. What would be required of him? What did Death mean by, You must placate the urges inside. Would the curse someday return? Would he ever truly be free? He hiked with his legs on autopilot, frequently glancing down to stare into the void of the mask's eyes. He did this for the next several months. One day, there was grass, and eventually, plants, trees. Green never looked so golden. The first flower Vant laid eyes on, a pink and yellow thing, captivated him for close to an hour. Color had new meaning after his time spent in the beige bleakness of the wastes. Upon arrival at a stream no more than a foot wide, Vant lay down and let the water roll over his hair. Heaven! Soon enough, he located a river to bathe in, berries to munch on, rocks to cut his beard with, and small woodland creatures to chat with, and subsequently, kill, cook, and eat. His first solid meal, flame-roasted frog, ran through his digestive system without so much as a pause in his stomach. But Vant kept trying, and at last his anatomy accepted tangible proteins again. With the restoration of his physicality, Mental musings and internal self-talk also returned. Feelings followed. He experienced the damp of depression upon remembering his last days in land escape. The sting of grief over a peaceful life long gone. The pain of heartbreak when forced to abandon his beloved. His beloved. Desire for her turned into longing. Then anger. That curse, that damn curse... Rip me from my love, my life, my home. The years. 
Oh my god, the years. How many lost? The thoughts could not be contained. They rushed like rapids through a decimated dam. Death stole me. Tortured me. Has me by the balls, and that's fine. He can have me. But not yet. I'm going home. To see my beloved. And I'll find a way to set things right. Somehow. First stop. Land escape. The return trip progressed. Once near the habitable areas, Vant raised his guard. He was well aware of the risk of walking through open spaces during the day, and even more when carrying valuables. His weapons, the handful of corpo capsules, and a relic given to him by a demigod certainly counted. In the wild, hijackings by nomads were serious business, and often fatal. For an additional precaution, Vant shifted to a sleep-by-day, hike-by-night routine. This provided no guarantee of safety. Nomads were skilled hunters at any hour, but he assumed it hedged his bet at least a touch. While he based his navigation upon celestial objects and topographical patterns, it was a sound that confirmed he was heading in the right direction. The subtle yet unmistakable shoom of a corpo bot in flight. The presence of the bot hinted at a nearby township, one that utilized corpo and its fleet of robots for delivery services, commerce, and goods. The automatons were wondrous devices, marvels of technological craftsmanship and impressive for their versatility. They flew with immediacy, and most deliveries were done in minutes due to their efficient network of hubs. Resembling a scarab when in kiosk mode and a praying mantis while in flight, each was constructed with the iconic brass that represented Corpo, the grand robotic city. He increased his pace toward the reverberation, while this bot was most certainly not from land escape, following its trail would lead Vant into the habitable zones, the area of land where most of civilization lay. He remained alert, knowing that the closer he got to the township the robot came from, the more palpable the danger of nomad attacks would become. Sure enough, he located the structure. Townships from the outside were mysteries. No one knew what treasures, or perils, waited inside. Vant had enough experience to know that land escape, the last dogma-free township, meant safety, while any other, such as this one, could very well suck him up and never spit him out. Over the years, many a wanderer had been seduced by the possibility of a warm bed or hot meal, only to fall victim to indoctrination, imprisonment, or an even worse fate. The hexagonal structure before Vant looked as if it had been airdropped into the isolated pocket of land. While the building was non-conforming to the rugged surroundings of the wilderness, the township's once white walls were now coated in dirt from a substantial period of neglect. Townships often displayed iconography to convey the nature of their prevalent beliefs. This served the purposes of either attracting wanderers who would be welcomed as potential converts, or frightening away any unwelcome guests. The renderings on this particular township's walls were simple and sterile, neutral, but welcoming. Basic shapes indicated sickly people being cared for and injuries being treated. Dogmatic societies dedicated themselves beyond the point of obsession to one methodology, and only one, is their solution to life extension. This township's dogma was clearly that of medical science as the hopeful path to everlasting life. Although its philosophy seemed sane enough, Vant was still skittish. No dogmatic township was to be trusted, as their psychoses often ran deep from vast numbers of years spent toiling in isolation. Even dogmatic societies with the best of intentions were feverishly protective of their ways of life. Yet more than the town's belief system, there was something else triggering Vant's nervous intuition. The culprit was the front door, or lack thereof. It had been pulverized, and all that remained was a mess of concrete and rubble. Someone or something had attacked this town. Impossible, Vant thought even though the evidence was right there in front of him. His mind could not comprehend it. Wars of any kind, even small battles, had been non-existent for more than a century. Nomads, of course, were a threat to any township. But they were, by nature, disorganized. 
they had nowhere near the wherewithal to launch an offensive attack of such a scope. While another township could have been responsible, the dogmatics simply had no reason to go after one another. Resources were abundant thanks to Corpo, and land was plentiful in the habitable zones. But even more so, dogmatic societies considered contrarian beliefs to be a hindrance. As such, they all existed in unwavering, unconditional isolation. Eerier still, this place, at a glance, seemed empty. Vant listened for any indicators of life and heard nothing. He knew he should have been able to hear something, anything past the entrance, but it was silent. The indicators of conflict were far too great to ignore. Vant, who had been present for the final conflicts after the shift, knew this attack held tremendous significance. Ignoring his curiosity would have been an impossible battle. The fighter's blood within him had to see what was going on. He entered the keep. Immediately, the deeply self-important mindset of the township arose. In media, all are cured, read an elaborate mural in the lobby. Marble-like statues displayed people in various states of sickness, with god and goddess-like saviors treating them. Several of the sculptures had been damaged, as had the wall separating the lobby from the main crux of the township. As if the invaders had carved a path right through. Deeper inside, the structure reeked of chemicals and disinfectants. The temperature regulation chilled Vance's skin. Chambers and chambers of clean rooms dotted the encampment. Each was full of elaborate devices designed to remove, manipulate, or repair human anatomy. Crystalline readouts projected intricate diagrams of the body. Many of the images showed the human form in positions it was not intended to be in, missing key body parts or with invasive-looking devices placed inside questionable areas. Vant could see winding stairwells leading to lodgings, as well as dedicated areas for dining and quarantine. He peered down a hallway filled with laboratories where behind the glass of each room, he could make out mechanical devices for the purposes of experimentation. Most featured scalpels, corkscrews, and cutting devices. All of the rooms had shackles for restraining patients. Evidence of conflict was everywhere. Shattered glass, discarded weapons, and scorch marks from firearms. His inquisitiveness was running wild, but Vant had seen enough. He knew it was unwise to linger even one moment longer than he had to, so he darted back outside into the woodlands. Protected again by cover, he considered the implications of this discovery. Why the invasion? He wondered. The attackers did not hold the township for their own purposes, so territorial possession was clearly not the goal. Similarly, all of the equipment inside appeared undisturbed. Unless they were after something small and specific, this was not a robbery. If it were a righteous thing, certainly those responsible would have burned the place to the ground or left some kind of message. All of this added up to a seemingly senseless assault. Nothing seemed missing, except for the people. Though Vant assumed they must have fled when the township was compromised. But no dead bodies. Not even one. He moved on from Medea and the mystery, though it traveled with him in his mind. After another corporal bot passed by overhead, Vant set course due north, underneath its trajectory following its lingering smoke trail. This meant he was navigating in the direction of Corpo, which served as the perfect landmark. The automated city was roughly a thousand miles away, but if he headed in that direction, his route would eventually intersect with land escape. Vant traveled for another week before he spotted a clear indicator confirming his course. A small clump of vegetation on the forest floor held a bluish tint. It was faint, but detectable to savvy eyes. The foliage around land escape featured this unique coloration, so Vant knew the deeper the saturation became, the closer he drew to the township. Then one day, as the sun rose, there it was. The city was not hidden. It was far too expansive to hide, yet painted blue patterns camouflaged the walls, matching the surrounding brush. The scope of the structure and the sounds of liveliness inside hinted at the thriving metropolis behind its grand walls, walls that encompassed the city in a perfect circle and angled inward to an open apex. The fortifications were just steep enough to make climbing into the city an impossibility, yet they allowed an abundance of sunshine and fresh air to stream in along with corpobots. Upon sight of the township, 
Vant became sentimental. Land Escape had sheltered him and been his home for many, many years. Still a good distance away, Vant circled the city until he located two massive trees carved into pillars, the symbolic barrier between Land Escape and the outside world. Two hundred-foot-high steel doors rose up from behind the redwoods, like giant protectors of the city, and before them lay a thicket that represented a safe zone within the town's perimeter of protection. As he approached, his intuition overrode his senses. Nomads had to be nearby. This was their way, lying in wait for travelers arriving to the city or pouncing on deserters leaving it. Vance stopped, lowered himself, and scoured the surroundings. Nothing. He had to get to the protected area somehow. The savages would know better than to cause trouble within the perimeter, as bored city snipers could be itching for some target practice. An idea came to Vant. He quietly tucked into his satchel and located Death's mask. Let's see what this thing does when there are people around, Vant thought. He put it on. Ice coated his insides as the mask bonded to his face. The environment shifted into darkness as it had in the desert. The bluish greenery turned ghostly black. But land escape, it was different. Something phenomenal was happening behind its walls. Particles of luminescence beamed from inside the city. The glowing silhouettes of a thousand or more people combined to create a gigantic mass of glowing light. It was astounding. Beautiful, even to Vant, who rarely appreciated beauty. Peaceful, even to Vant, who had known peace only once in his entire life. He was entranced by the ripples of light that moved through the township, but he managed to pull his focus back to the forestry surrounding the city. Sure enough, Vant could identify the glowing shapes of nomads concealed among the brush and branches. Right there, he thought noticing a weak spot where the concentration of bodies was thin. That's my way in. Vant removed the mask and took a steadying breath. He sped through the unprotected pocket and crossed into the open. He was now exposed, but safely inside Land Escape's perimeter of protection. He heard a curse from a nearby tree, then another, then a barrage of threatening taunts. Vant held his ground. He dared not speak not to the nomads, and not to the gate guard. He knew the protocol. He needed to be on the good side of whatever watchman was currently on duty. Whoever manned the door was the last word on whether a person was in or out. After a few minutes, static, a hiss, and a voice sounded over loudspeakers. No matter wonder. Wanderer. Deserter or cast out. The guard asked over lip smacks. Vant, it seemed, was disturbing his breakfast. Deserter. Specific answers to this test were essential. Vant knew a wrong one meant he would be denied access to the township, and the savages in the trees would be granted their opportunity to attack. From? This was a problem. Vant's only option was to lie. If he admitted to deserting Land Escape years ago, he would be rejected outright. No second chances with townships. Strata. Vet made up. Dogma. None. Tribute. This was new. Once a sanctuary for those who had escaped the clutches of dogmatic townships, land escape, it now seemed, charged admission. Tribute. The voice asked again. Pills. Corpo capsules, like a, like a handful or so. Branches rustled in the nearby trees. Vant imagined the hidden wildlings salivating at the thought of his loot. To the faceless guard enjoying his meal, Vant mumbled a silent plea to hurry the hell up. Show him. Well, I may as well taunt starving bears with a steak. Vant thought. This had the potential of turning sour. Fast. But what choice do I have? He removed the pills from his satchel and held them up. He heard the tension of an arrow drawing in a bow, a gun loading, a knife wetting. Several voices in hushed tones conspired to attack. Too much time was dragging on. Vant was about to bail when, at last, the guard spoke, giving a canned speech with his mouth full. Deserter, upon admission, you'll be subjected to a full body search. 
You'll renounce any civil rights you may have had in the other townships, and you shall hereby relinquish any entitlements that may be interpreted as a threat to the liberty of land escape. You will, without protest, turn over any material goods until such time it is decided you are not harboring malicious intent. Those items may or may not be returned to you, depending upon multiple criteria. If we determine at any point during the interview process that you're a menace to our peaceful way of life, you will be immediately cast out, your belongings will be forfeited, and you'll be permanently denied re-entry into landscape. The guard slurped his beverage. Now this next part isn't in the book, but I like to say it anyway. If you so much as look at one of our citizens in a way I don't approve of, you will be gunned down without discrimination by one of our marksmen. Some of them have pretty good aim when they're sober. A camouflaged sniper on the wall fired off a warning shot. A flock of birds scattered from the trees. Vant almost lost control of his bladder. The gunfire was so sudden and deafening. Hilarious, boys. Hilarious. Vant thought. I understand. I agree, Vance said. The sound of a crumbling wrapper indicated the completion of the guard's meal. Security team, prepare for deserter entry and immediate processing. Turrets active, high alert, threat level, medium. A symphony of guns powered up. Targeting lasers peppered Vant and Dots. Deserter approached the doors. He did. Arms raised. Deserter, halt. Deserter, remove all equipment and personal belongings and place them in the scanner. Vant dropped his satchel and robes into the chute, experiencing relief. Unless the nomads had an interest in his ratty undergarments, he was now safe from raiders. Deserter, step away. Vant stepped to the side. The enormous steel doors protecting the township cracked open, but only enough for a lone person to walk through. It made sense as to why but Vant felt it quite anticlimactic for them to only open a few feet wide. Deserter, enter and submit. Vant walked through the entrance. Deserter, on your knees. He knelt. A detail of guards surrounded him. They pointed firearms at his head. The door slammed shut behind him. 